Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you case 59 and the best way to do cataract surgery series. This is a sticky and stubborn lens and it doesn't want to come out. And it's also a medium pupil. I'm going to just show you this is not a perfect case. And so that's the whole point. And so not every single case is perfect. And so I'm going to show you how I'm able to get out of a sticky situation. So you're using a cotton tip to hold the eye and using a corneal marker to help me center and size my rexus. Make my paracentesis incisions first on the right side and then the left side. Make sure I'm flat to the iris plane, which will allow me to make a nice corneal shelf, which enables me to achieve a self-sealing corneal incision. This is the left eye here. I'm injecting some intracameral lidocaine and then some intracameral epinephrine. I think it did stabilize the pupil a little bit. I'm injecting some dispersive viscoelastic and using the cannula to control the eye, I do the triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove, place the blade into the deep part of the groove, tunnel through the cornea using the cannula as countertraction. Once I'm ready to dive down, I turn the eye towards me with the cannula and enter. That's the triplanar corneal incision. So I'm gonna go in with the T sideways and this is the puncture style capsule rexus. I puncture centrally. And then pull down towards me. You can see that the pupil came down a little bit. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and inject some more viscoelastic. But pushing down to puncture, sometimes it causes that fluid to come out. And so it's always nice to fill up the bag some more. So once I have the appropriate diameter, I start to pull on the right side of the tear to create a flap. And then I'm going around circumferentially. Again, I'm using the previously made corneal marks, which will help me to hopefully center and size my rex as well. So I go ahead and finish off the rexus and then burp the viscoelastic out. And this is the capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I'll place the cannula underneath the rexus edge, contra incisionally, point the tip down into the equator. You'll get a nice fluid wave as you see here. And then I go out, decompress on the left side, and then I'll go out to the right side, pointing the tip down. And in this case, you see, this is a soft lens. It's a sticky lens. And I had some trouble turning the lens. And so that's despite a really nice fluid wave. This lens is just a little bit stubborn. I'm trying to find other areas to get a little bit of a wave. I also, I believe I did a little bit of hydrodelineation as well. And so whenever the lens doesn't turn, with the techniques that I do, it doesn't really matter. I'm still able to disassemble the lens. It's just not going to spin like normal. So I'm just keeping that in mind. But again, when you do double chop, cross chop, and mechanical fracturing techniques, you don't actually have to spin the lens. In fact, that's why this technique is so good for weak zonules. So I don't have to spin the lens for weak zonules, and I don't have to spin the lens even if I, I'm not able to with the hydrodissection. I place the chopper out to the equator and then place the fake tip vertically subincisionally, crush the lens completely in half. That's the double chop. Place the chopper underneath the right hemineucleus, pulling it centrally towards the fecal tip, and then I'll crush the right hemineucleus. That's the cross chop. Once I do that, I'm going to use the vacuum to lift that first quadrant up out of the bag, and then using mechanical fracturing forces, crush the lens pieces into smaller pieces, and then emulsify the lens pieces. Again, I'm leveraging mechanical fracturing forces in lieu of using ultrasonic energy. So once that first quadrant is up out of the bag, you can see here I'm trying to place the chopper underneath that second quadrant, and it's really just not wanting to come up here. And so, again, I don't want to spin the lens if I don't have to. I'm using a little bit of vacuum to pull up on that other hemineucleus. I was able to use that vacuum to lift it up, and then I got around it with the chopper, and then I crushed it, and so I was able to sandwich and divide that second quadrant over there on the left side. So I lift that third quadrant now up with high vacuum and then get around it with the chopper, crushing it using mechanical fracturing forces. 
and then emulsifying the lens pieces. So in this case, I'm using more vacuum to grab the lens pieces up and pulling them up out of the bag. And then once I grab them up, I sandwich it between the chopper and fingertip using mechanical fracturing forces, and then using ultrasonic energy and vacuum as needed to emulsify the lens pieces. So it has a little bit of density. This is a sticky lens, like I said, the bag just didn't want to cooperate. And I do feel like in these cases, it's a little bit because of the lens, but also a little bit because of the zonules. I wouldn't be surprised if the zonules weren't great in this eye. And so this is the last quadrant. It doesn't really want to turn. And so rather than try to pull and stretch the zonules, I decided to come out and I'm going back in with the right angled hydrodissection cannula. So I go into the sub incisional space and I start to hydrodissect again. And by doing so, I'm able to kind of tease that lens piece up and remove and separate some of the adhesions between the bag and the lens. So I go back in with the FACO tip, hoping that it's a little bit looser now. So I'm using the chopper to kind of tease the lens up away from the bag. You see that I'm lifting it and turned it up. And now you see it actually just prolapsed it and popped it vertically. Now I'm able to sandwich that lens piece very easily and uh, use a little vacuum to grab the piece and then crushing it and dividing it between the chopper and the fake tip. Again, this lens does have some density. Again, sticky and adherent against the capsular bag. Using mechanical fracturing forces to crush the lens pieces into smaller pieces and then emulsifying the lens pieces. So once all the endonucleus is removed, I start to remove the epinucleus from anterior to posterior. And you can see the epinucleus is pretty adherent and sticky against the bag as well. So I get underneath the epinucleus with the chopper lifted up, bring it to the phaco tip, and then emulsifying that remainder of that epinucleus. So I take the chopper out, push BSS in, take the FACO tip out, and go in with the INA handpiece. So I start to polish underneath the rexus edge. Oftentimes, when the lens doesn't spin very well, once you get all the epinucleus out, I tend to have a lot more cortical material. Oh, did you see that right there? I actually grabbed zonules right there in that area. And again, it just confirms to me that in these cases of sticky lenses, it's a little bit of the lens, but it's also a lot of the bag too. So I quickly switched to polish mode. So this clearly is a weak zonular situation. I grabbed that bag across from me. Again, I wasn't even using high vacuum in doing so. And so this was a good thing that I didn't perseverate and pull on the bag or stretch the bag and try to just using brute force, trying to spin the lens within the bag. So this patient does have some compromised zonules. And so I was able to very carefully switch back to polish mode and very carefully start to remove these fine cortical wisps. And so anytime the lens doesn't spin, I don't panic, I don't get worried. You can always go back, rehydrodissect. You can use your chopper to prolapse pieces up out of the bag. You can even use viscoelastic to reposition the lens pieces so it's easily accessible to the phaco tip. You can see I'm using the INA tip in the polish mode to very carefully and tease away some of the cortical material from the bag. And you see it's puckering quite a bit when I'm on the posterior capsule here. Again, just emphasizing and reiterating that this zonules are really not that great. So I'm pulsing into the subincisional space with the cannula here. And as I do so, you can see there's a bunch of cortical material that's coming out. You saw some cortical wisps subincisionally. And so this cannula technique, by basically doing a pressure wash technique, you're able to kind of clean it off really nicely. I still have some bits there, but I'm going to go after it with the sweep. I'm injecting some cohesive viscoelastic to fill the bag, and then I'll use a sweep to go into the subincisional capsule area, see if I can polish the rest of that fine wispy cortical material.
So I'm polishing on the left side and then the right side. With all these maneuvers, I'm pretty confident that I'm able to mobilize any stubborn lens material. If I don't see anything come out at this step, go ahead and inject the single piece acrylic lens into the capsular bag. And then once the lens is in place, I can use the lens as a buffer and protector and more confidently go after that subincisional cortical material. I go in with the INA handpiece, making sure that both haptics are disengaged from the optic. Go underneath the optic, tilting it, rotating it 90 degrees clockwise, removing all the viscoelastic from within the bag. And then I remove all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. And then I'll hydrate my incision. So again, this was a stubborn and sticky lens. Part of this is due to the nature of the lens itself, but also because of weak zonules. And so I don't like to try to use brute force to spin the lens in this situation. I like to very carefully either rehydrate dissect using my chopper to manipulate the lens pieces or even using viscoelastic to manipulate the lens pieces. And doing it this way, you're very zonular safe, zonular friendly. And again, using mechanical fracturing forces and double chop, cross chop, you can also, again, be very gentle on the zonules and provide a very safe surgery in these challenging situations. So I hope this was helpful to you and I thank you for your attention.